Marijuana legal in most U.S. states after ballots. Marijuana has become legal in a majority of U.S. states following Tuesday's election, a paradigm shift that signals how much American attitudes towards the drug have changed. Voters in California, Nevada and Massachusetts decided to legalize cannabis for recreational use, while voters in four more states legalized the medical use of marijuana. Other ballot measures across the country saw voters approve tighter gun controls and higher taxes on tobacco and soda, all typically liberal issues that run counter to the strong conservative turnout in Tuesday's presidential and congressional votes. For the marijuana industry, Tuesday's wins call into question the U.S. federal-level ban on the substance that has been in place for more than a century. That ban is becoming awkward to enforce as more states legalize the drug. Last week, President Barack Obama said the total federal ban looked increasingly not tenable in the face of legalization at the state level. After Tuesday's vote, marijuana is legal for recreational use in seven states, and legal for medical use in 23 states. The time has come for cannabis legalization, said Troy Dayton, chief executive of ArcView, a marijuana investment network. That is going to be the next step, how do we end federal prohibition as soon as possible? How do we resolve the banking issues, the taxation issues? His research indicates that the legal marijuana market will grow by 29% a year to reach $7.6 billion in annual sales in California by 2020. This is a huge growth industry, he added. However, the federal level ban still prevents most marijuana companies from opening accounts with banks, which are federally licensed, meaning that large swaths of the industry still function on a cash basis. All of the new measures would tax the sale of marijuana, with California imposed a 15% tax on sales. A Gallup poll last month showed that, for the first time, a majority of Americans favor legalizing marijuana, marking a big shift in attitudes from previous decades. A proposal to legalize the drug in Maine was too close to call on Wednesday, as the last votes were still being counted in the state. Other ballot measures saw several victories for gun control, with tighter restrictions on guns approved by voters in California, Nevada and Washington. The Nevada measure which expanded background checks, had been heavily supported by Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York, who has made gun control a key issue. However voters in Maine rejected a similar measure to expand background checks. For the tobacco industry, Tuesday's ballot measures brought mixed results. Voters rejected higher tobacco taxes in three states, Colorado, Missouri and North Dakota. However California, the world's sixth largest economy, increased tobacco taxes by $2 per pack of cigarettes and also expanded taxes on e-cigarettes. Tobacco companies spent more than $70 million lobbying against the tax increase in California, which passed with 63% of voters in favor. Stanton Glantz, who heads the Center for Tobacco Control Research at the University of California, San Francisco, praised the measure. The combined effects of the price increase and a reinvigorated tobacco control program could make California the first state to reach former Surgeon General Everett Koop's vision of a smoke-free society, he said. Voters in several cities in California and Colorado also approved new soda taxes, a move that doubles the number of cities that tax sweet drinks. Boulder, Colorado and three cities in the California Bay Area, San Francisco, Albany and Oakland all voted in the new tax on Tuesday. Previously only two U.S. cities, Philadelphia and Berkeley, had soda taxes. Separately, voters in four states approved minimum wage increases. And on the criminal justice front, voters in three states affirmed that they want to maintain the death penalty, by rejecting measures that would have ended capital punishment.